So Pollen is a variable based CSS library that was inspired by one of my other favorites, Tail in CSS. So to get started, I've created this code swing. There's also a data.json file that you can see right here. Let's see, we'll just put it over here. And you can see that it has just the data for the website. Uh, I, I have an image folder right here that has all the images that I'm going to need. This is essentially an array of objects and the objects are the different sort of menu sections. So this first one's called appetizers. It has a name, a description, and then an items array that has a bunch of different items with links to the photos and the prices and all that stuff. One last thing is that I am using CodeSwing. So there's a CodeSwing.json file and that is automatically loading two things for me. It's loading Alpine.js as well as the styles from Pollen. So the first thing I'll do is add an image and that is just gonna load my logo. So that's gonna be in the IMG folder and it's called logo.png. And then, and for the alt tag, I'll use Mex Santos logo here and I'm gonna give this a class and so for this logo class I'm just gonna add some basic CSS here where pollen becomes useful is by giving you all these variables that you can use where you would normally put CSS and the nice thing about it is that because these are variables they can be updated anytime so if I wanted to for example do a maximum width I could type max width 100% here or I could use one of the pre-built variables and then for max width uh, we could type in one of the other variables so here we would be able to say something like size and then one of the pre-built sizes all right let's go ahead and move this interface around a little bit i'm going to put this index.html file here and then the css file right next to it just so that i have a lot more room to work with things uh, here on the left i'm going to go into my html and start working with alpine so what I'm going to do is create a div with a class of menu and that's where my menu items are going to go. And what you do with Alpine is you create any data that you want into an X data att attribute. Interestingly enough, uh, any kind of prefix of X dash is valid HTML. So pretty interesting. And then in here, you just put in any variables that you want to bring in. So what I'm gonna create is just a variable that's gonna be an empty array because it's gonna be the list of information that I'm going to bring in. And I'm gonna put that in X data. And then I'm going to use X init to initialize that data uh, variable. So I'm going to make an assignment here. I'm gonna say data is going to be equal to, and then I will use a couple of await functions to bring in the data using the fetch API. So we'll say await fetch find the data. So let's make sure we put a quotation there. Find the data and then add data.json. Right, let's close out the single quote and then the two parentheses and then we'll convert this to JSON using JavaScript's JSON function. And that will allow me to bring in my data in a JSON format, and it will now be available into my project. The other thing that xdata does is that it initializes this section of your HTML as sort of an Alpine JS component. So now I can use any of Alpine commands in order to bring in the data. Now to do that, I'm going to need a template. And my template is going to be a loop. So I'm going to say X4. And I'm going to call, since I have essentially three categories of menu items, I'm going to say category in data. So, um, and then in here, I'm going to create a diff with a let's see a class of column right like this and then in here I can start sort of working with my template I'm gonna have another div with a class of category name right and here is where I can start typing in 
some of the data that I've received from my JSON document. So this could say here X text. So this is how I insert text into a template. So I say X text equal and then category dot name. So you can see now that I have the category names from the data.json file. So if you remember, the data.json has uh, three different categories and right now I'm querying for the name. So that is pretty amazing. So in addition to the name, I'm also gonna bring in the description. I'll just make a copy of this one and type in category description here. And now we have the name and the description as well. And then what I want to do is add a group of cards. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to add a card group class here. So I'm going to say I want to use a template here. Um, I'm going to use X4, which is how Alpine allows you to go through a list of elements. And then in here, item and category items. So I'm going to go through the list of items in here in this template, a class of card or a div with a class of card, an image with a class of card image. So you can see it typing it in there already. Uh, and let's see, now I need a source attribute. And for that, I can do the, an X bind with a source attribute. So I'm gonna say in here, item.img, uh, and then I'm gonna use the thumbnails, underscore tn.jpg, and I need to put this in quotes, right? So if you look at the data.json file, my image data object here uh, has just the name of where the image is uh, without the extension. Uh, and the images that I have, I have like a high res and a low res version. The low res is called underscore tn.jpg. And that's where all that is coming from. So, and I believe that I don't need to put xbind. I could just put in colon source like this. So you can use the shortcut for alt. I could just do the same thing, alt item title. And it'll get that alt tag as well. I usually like my classes to be kind of in the top, so I'll add that here. And now I'm going to type in a new div called card content. So here we'll do card title, and then here we'll do x text is going to be item title. So now we have the title of the items. And I'm just going to copy this a few times. Description. All right, one thing I do need to fix is this category name is in here twice. So this one should be category description. Let's get into the nitty gritty of pollen. I'll start off by creating a reset. So I'm gonna do this with the star selector, which will select everything on the page. And I'm gonna set the margin using the variable provided by pollen to size zero. We'll do the same thing for padding. And then we'll set the font family to font sans, which will give us a nice sans serif font. And we'll set the font weight to font light. So it'll give us a lighter version of the fonts. And this is kind of how I like to start all my projects. All right, let's also set some defaults for the body. And here I can use the variable for color. And then black. I'll set a background image and use the background image from the image folder. All right, so let's keep on working on this. We'll work on the menu class next. For this, we'll use a max width, and I'm gonna set that to a variable called width Excel. So this will be the width of the menu container. And then I'll also add a margin zero auto to center that. So this is gonna be the, so this would be the mobile first layout. And as it gets smaller, it's eventually going to get to a size like this. So I also want to add a little bit of padding. And I'll use a size five that gives you a nice little space when the width of the container is pretty small. At the top of each column, I have a category name. 
I'll use a font weight here. And there's a bunch of font weight classes. So you can say font bold. For this one though, I want font black, which is the darkest of all the variables that are available to me. All right, for color, I'm going to try color red here. And I want it to be a darker red. There are a bunch of different sort of versions of red or the different colors that you can use. So 700 is the darkest one. And then I'll do font size. For that, I'm going to use a scale variable called three. All right, let's do a couple of things for the description. So we have another class called category description here. Now for that, I'm just gonna set the line height using one of uh, the variables, There's actually some variables for letting, and I'll use the SM size for the letting. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of margin at the bottom of these. That looks pretty good. The individual items have, the individual items have a class of card title. So for that, I'm going to use the orange color and I'll leave it at 700. So I'm gonna use the bold version of the font and I'm gonna use scale two here for the size. So I want it to be a little bit smaller than the headings. All right, card description. And I want this to be a little smaller. There's these sizes or these scales that actually are below zero. It's a little bit odd. So you can say zero and then you can say zero, zero, which is smaller than zero. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> Let's do the price. I'm going to make that green. Bold works pretty good here. And I'm going to align this to the right. So the prices don't have any uh, dollar symbols. So we're just going to make that happen. And we'll use the before pseudo class selector here. And with content, we could just add a dollar sign that appears at the very top. So next up, let's work on our image. I'm going to put that over here. We'll use size 20 and give that to the width and height. Let's use a border radius and it does come with a lot of variables for border radius here. So we can say radius LG here. Now it does have these variables for box shadows, but they don't work particularly well. They are very like light box shadows uh, and actually what you do here um, it's not shadow LG but what you do is you define something called the elevation and then you give it a number and as you can see it's not really looking like it does very much so I'm gonna show you that you can take any existing variable in the framework and if you don't like how it looks you can actually redefine it that's one of the sort of powerful features of this. So I'm gonna go over here to the very top and in my root selector, which will be sort of everything that happens before any of my CSS loads, I'm gonna say elevation one is now going to mean something else, zero. And then I can put in whatever I want here, five pixels, 10 pixels, and then RGB. 000, zero, zero slash 70%. And now you're getting a nice shadow. You're still using the language of the framework, but you can redefine any of the variables. So if you don't like the way that green looks, you can make it whatever green you want it to look, or if you don't like any of these other colors, it's pretty easy to do. All right, let's work on our layout just a little bit. So I'm gonna do card group here. I'll say the display flex. I'm gonna use the flex direction column. So they're not side by side like that. And then I'm gonna set up a gap here. And then, so we have a card group. And in addition to that, we have each individual card. So again, display flex and another gap here. And I'm gonna set this to size six here. That aligns everything pretty good. It looks like a pretty decent menu already. Let's try some responsive content here. So I'm gonna go back up here to the menu and I'm gonna add a media query here. And so 
I'm going to set the max width to none. So to see I'm gonna this, I'm going to go ahead and hide the sidebar and make this actually a lot wider. So this is what's going to happen when the menu gets pretty wide. So using this play flex here is going to make each one of the items align into different columns like this. And I'm going to set the gap to a size of eight. So we get a little bit of room in between the different I'm going to get a little fancy here and rotate some of the columns. So in here, so in here, I'm going to rotate each of the different by columns. negative one and a half degrees to get even fancier. I'm going to do something on every odd column. So I'll say end child instead of two here, I'll say odd. And so you get this nice little layout. Now, when it's a smaller size, it looks pretty good. And when it's a bigger size, it looks good as well. Like, let's go ahead and fix these gaps right here. So on my menu, I'm going to set it to display flex and set the flex direction to column. And then I will add a gap here with a variable of five. And that will add these sort of gaps in between the different elements. It's gonna give you that sort of space at this breakpoint, but it's still gonna work at the larger breakpoint.